Hello there all you wonderful, beautiful ladies and gentlemen of the internet. It's been quite a long time since the last time we made one of these episodes. Welcome to episode 8 of my video game consoles reviews on one of my favorite systems of all time, the beautiful, the beloved, the Sega Saturn. I'm your host, Hazuki Warrior 921 here bringing you another episode. We got no ring and no watch this time because unfortunately, uh, both of them got... Yeah, that's lost in time. Um, I'm gonna get a new watch and ring though, because I'm still with, with my fiance, that's all good. Um, but you know, that's besides the point. Today, we are doing this. We're looking at one of my favorite systems of all time the beloved, the beautiful, the wonderful, the underrated, the underdog. Granted, one of the greatest consoles, in my opinion, ever made the Sega Saturn, and quite possibly the best, debatably, very debatably, because it comes with a really close tie with the Dreamcast. The best console Sega themselves has ever made. Oh yes, I'm dead fucking serious. You ever heard of the Mega Drive or Sega Genesis? They ain't got nothing on the Saturn. Okay, I'm 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 fucking kidding. I I, I love the Genesis. And I love the Master System. That's not true. No, all four Sega consoles are equally amazing in my opinion. But like, when it comes to like you know what has like the most amazingest, eye popping, coolest, funnest games ever. I have to give it to the Saturn or 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 the Dreamcast, and I'm being honest with you. The Genesis and the Master System are, are great in terms of fun and quality, but comparing it to the Saturn and Dreamcast, I, it's really like it's kind of like night, night and day because like the Master System Genesis still has like ha, still has a dated quality to them as well. You know, those like, you know all the titles are 2D, they're 8-bit, 16-bit games. They're, they are for sure kind of like more archaic compared to games on the Saturn. There's a lot of games on the Saturn and Dreamcast that are very, very future-proof and timeless games. And what I mean by that is, you know, the gameplay themselves are, are designed a lot like games we might be playing today. It's really unique stuff on here. So, with that being said, let's get into it. We have here probably what might catch your eyeballs immediately is this beautiful Christmas box version of it. Yeah, Christmas came early this year on this channel. Uh, I, I really, I specifically want this video to be uploaded before Halloween and before Christmas because not only does this title have a whole Christmas, not only does this console have like a whole Christmas like theme to it, but there's a lot of scary games on it, too, a lot of really great horror games on the Saturn that I want to talk about. So it's not just uh, you know Christmas-based stuff. This is the era when Sega really started putting Christmas-related titles. Or this is this is the era when Sega started putting Christmas in a lot of their games. Uh, for whatever reason, they just had fun with it. One of the first iconic ones ever was Nights into Dreams. Special present, bunch of kanji that I cannot read right now, because um, I cannot read kanji yet. It's uh, I, I'm guessing it says something about Nights, Nights into Dreams or Christmas Nights being on here. But yeah, it's a very iconic Sega game. If you've never, if you've never heard of Nights before. Oh boy, well, it's either you've been living under a rock, or I can't fully blame you, because it's kind of like in the middle. Like, Knights himself, the, the, this character is kind of iconic when it comes to Sega, but like, where, where Knights came from, not so much, right? Because, like, you know, Sega's really trying to, Sega for years, forever, have been trying to push the character of Knights, the game, you know, on the Steam, and on the Xbox, and PlayStation, all that great stuff. And I think it's even on the Switch, I think, I could be very wrong about that. But yeah, they've been trying very hard to push Knights, and Knights is a really important character, in my opinion. Um, he really is. He only has two games, which is like, ah, or she, you know, depending how, how you want to look at it. But we'll talk more about Knights later. Uh, here is the box, the American Christmas Sega Saturn box. I'm so happy to have this box, finally. And what a beautiful console. It does come in white like this. Um, this is the Japanese Model 2 Sega Saturn. That, that's the one I'm specifically looking at, the HST-0017 uh, model. The next generation of home entertainment is right here in this machine. The Sega Saturn welcomes you to the next level. <laughs> well, I thought that was only an American slogan. Oh, I guess not. Sega, with its slightly skyish blue colored logo, that's what Japan has. North America has like a more like, you know, royal blue and navy blue logo. Uh, there it is. Sega Saturn. On the box, is the, exact, the other size is the exact same thing. It's like this, the same stuff all around. Some kanji, the date, I think they got the system, the... The person who had this, which is really cool, they wrote that down. A day after Christmas in 1996. That's pretty neat, in my opinion. And, I, and that's kind of cool that they actually did that. Wow. Maybe Sega wrote that. I don't know. Maybe he was one of the contests. I have no idea. And here's his HST-0014. Maybe they're both the correct model number or number number. Maybe it's this is like for the box, and this is for like you know an, an older version of like the box. 
before the Christmas release? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm just guessing. I I, no, I, don't, I don't know. I have no idea. But yeah, um, this is it. This is the Christmas Sega Saturn. Yep. So, let's get into unboxing it, shall we? But yeah, there is a lot to say about the Saturn. There's so much to say about the Saturn. Um, you know, it was it was released in 1994 in Japan. Can you believe that? November, I believe. And Ma March of October, or May. No, I mean, May of 1995. And one very sad, infamous thing about the North American Sega Saturn was that Sega released it at the very first E3 in, in gaming history. Sega announced that, hey, the Sega Saturn's out right now. You can go out and buy it right now. Now, after this, after this whole thing is over, after this press conference, that was a really bad marketing idea because they they rushed out the console. It wasn't ready for release yet, and it was released at three ninety nine, four hundred dollars in nineteen ninety five. That's it was inflation. That's a lot of money today. It's like a thousand bucks or so today. I think it's, it's it was just too much. And then Mark Cerny, I think no, was it Mark Cerny? I can't remember who it. But the, the the CEO, the guy of PlayStation at the time, so went on stage right after Sega Day, and all he said was. 299, you know the famous 299 speech that everybody fucking talks about when it comes to the PlayStation 1 and Saturn. Yeah, I know it's stupid as shit, but he did say that because the, he was basically saying, hey, the PS1 is only going to be 299 compared to the Saturn, which is 399 with its expensive memory cards and shit. You know, it was like it was ridiculous. I think that they were 50 bucks and stuff. I don't know. It was it was like Sega just did not have a chance against the PS1, but that was their own fault. And let's take his own fault. You know, they really should have kept, gave, gave the console more time. And then they, we probably would have Sega making hardware today. We probably would. But I, I digress. And so let's, let's get the sucker open up. Here we have the game that should come with. A beautiful version of Christmas, Christmas Nice. I love the Japanese box art. Look at that. It's a dream paradox. This is very Sonic Team-like. You know, it's just very, like, Japanese Sonic-like. You know, if you've ever seen the Japanese box arts... To the Genesis or Mega Drive Sonic games, I I don't think I put them in. Did I put them in my Genesis video? I think I did. They look very similar. It's like the same kind of like, like, you know, like I, stylistically speaking idea, like you know, for the artwork. And then I'll show you the uh, normal version of the game really quick for the Japanese version. Same exact idea. See? Oh shit! Just isn't in Christmas themed. You see what I mean? Look at that. It's very Sonic-ish in a way. Very Sonic Team-esque, I should say. And then there's there's the back. Of the games. There's the sides. Oh, whoops. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so Nice is great. I love Nice. Oh, the oh, one of the only few Sega Sonic games I've ever actually finished because I just I love it so much. Here's that beautiful white controller. Look at that. Look at those buttons. The besides, does this look a little familiar to you guys out there? Can you see my Genesis video? That's why it looks just like the Sega Genesis 6 on the controller, except that it has triggers. And uh, why does it have a uh, back and forward button and a repeat stop and pause and play button? We'll get into that later. But yes, uh, for, for those of you out there who may not know, besides the Sega CD and I think maybe the, uh, what was it? The, uh, oh god, the Turbo Graphics. So how could I forget the Turbo Graphics CD? Um, the Sega Saturn is, is one of the first consoles I ever played CD-ROM discs. And when I, when I think of a game console that can play CD-ROM discs, it's usually this that comes to mind versus the Sega CD, my, and just, just to me personally. Because the Saturn does a really great like presentation with it, it's beautiful. But there's also something else really unique this console can do, which we'll get into later. Um, it, it didn't do so well in North America, but it did incredibly well in Japan. And we'll kind of get into why later. But one thing I will tell you for right now, which is kind of a hint, uh, a hint of, of how and why it did so well in Japan is that it had this this piece of is this piece of technology built into it called VCDs. It, it could play VCDs, which we'll get to later. Here are the cables. This is the first one of the first consoles ever just to have a basic, you know, one of these cables. Basically, I think it might be the first. I'm not, I don't. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But this is a basic like uh, two prong connected like I don't. I know these cables have a name. But I forgot what it was. But these are like the most standard basic universal cables ever. Which every single piece of te technology ever should use these cables because they're so common and good. And then the Saturn AV cables. Now here's something else about the Saturn. The Saturn's internal audio like system is reversed. Uh, I don't know exactly how to word that. What I'm trying to say is, is that this is your like video left and right cables. I think white is 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 right, right is left or something. But like when you plug these in, you want to reverse these two to the opposite inputs into your TV. It's weird, but 
Yeah, I know, but you want to do that. I don't really notice an audio difference, but I heard that in one of the, uh, it's called My Life in Gaming videos, one of, one of the series. There's a guy in My Life in Gaming that explained that you, when you plug in your Saturn, you want to flip around these two cables, you want to reverse them, you plug them in for the for the correct audio input. I don't know, it's apparently that's how the Saturn was designed. I don't know if that's just for the North American console, or if it's for both Japanese and North American, but so far, I don't know, I don't know, I, I'm looking more research on that, oh sorry, I'll leave it on that maybe. Um, also, another hint about what I'm trying to say about the Saturn, something cool it does, is that Sega, another reason why it was so big in Japan, on the other hand, is that they, they actually made a bunch of deals with a bunch of different companies to help market the Saturn, and we'll get into that later. Uh, yeah, which really helped, but there's something that they, that they really pushed the Saturn could do while they're marketing it. Kind of, kind of similar to the, what the PS2 could do in, in North America, but we'll get to that. Or with PS2, we'll get to all that later. So here it is. My beautiful white Sega Saturn, which I've had for the past uh, five or so years now. I had this since 2017. I haven't looked back since. This is the only Saturn I have now. I used to have four Saturns at once. Can you believe that? I used to have four Saturns at once. No joke. I don't know if I ever got them all to view together. But I had the gray. I, I maybe I did, but I, I had the gray Model 1 Sega Saturn, which is a beautiful console. Just it, Aesthetically speaking, though, it doesn't go well with like the other Sega systems. Um, and I had two black North American Sega Saturns, Model 1 and Model 2. And they only came in black for North America, but yeah, I really had them. So, and yeah, it was great, but like the North American ones were not really working that well. And eventually I just sold ahead to keep this one because it's the, uh, it's the best quality one I, I own out of all of them. And I absolutely love this console. I had a bit of a mark right there. But yeah, here it is. You open it up. And there goes the game. So, for those of you out there who might be fairly familiar with Sega hardware, what does this console kind of look like to you? Any ideas? I'll give you a hint. It's its, it's, it's uh, successor, which is probably a dead giveaway. It looks like a prototype, in my opinion, to a Sega Dreamcast. And that's specifically why I wanted a white one, a white Sega Star Mal 2, was so it could like mirror my white Sega Dreamcast, and I have a black Sega Master System and a black Sega Genesis. It's like a, yeah, so you know it all kind of goes together. But now I now I, I kind of want to get a black Sega Saturn again because I just recently bought a black Sega Dreamcast, a Sega Sports one. So I'm I'm looking on the market right now to hopefully get a black Sega Saturn Mal One again. But they're like 500 bucks now. It's ridiculous. They're really yeah. It's <sighs> something I really have to worry about later. Um, obviously. But yeah, here it is. Um, here are the control ports. Good stuff. It says Sega right there. Saying that cartridge input. This is where your memory cards would go. No, this unfortunately is not backwards compatible with the Mega Drive or Genesis or Master System. It really should have been. It really should have been. If if anything, which this may sound really stupid and like and like ridiculous, and I I, I think I said this in my other video, the Sega Saturn right at the box should have had built-in Sega CD backwards compatibility. That would have been really freaking cool. And, I, and the people would be like, oh, come on, what the fuck? And the Sega CD sucked. Like, no, no, it didn't. Because it had so many great games on it. And it was just, you know, it was just marketed kind of funny. And it had some really weird, bizarre games on it that, you know, weren't, weren't very great. But they had some really great shining jewels on there. It had some, there's some really amazing games for the Sega CD, in my opinion. But the Saturn, oh my god. The Saturn compared to the Sega CD is kind of like comparing, like, you know, what like a meal that's like half really good and, and and half you know it was like nah the other half's not that great but the other half it was pretty good like a meal that's kind of like half and half and a meal that's like a freaking beautiful well cooked experience that just the taste is just dancing on your tongue that's what this console is i to compare the sega cd and the gym cast is like the same exact idea as like an amazing perfect meal but with a little more fluff to it it's kind of just like that so i'm not even kidding Compared to Sega CD Dreamcast and or Sega CD Saturn Dreamcast, it's kind of like that. If you, if you can get what I'm saying, it's ridiculous. Like in terms of quality, comparing all three of them, yeah, it's really it's really it's quite like that. Especially if you get to experience the Dreamcast to its true fullest potential. But we'll save all that for, for the Dreamcast for you. It's about the Sega Saturn. Uh, I believe this is the first gaming console ever to do online gaming. You heard me right. I think. This is the first game, the first console ever, we could actually play online with other people, like, like, you know, like, around the world. It's either this one or the Dreamcast. 
I don't know because I don't have any Sega Saturn games with the option to be like, hey, do you want to play online? Or you know, you know, that's like on there. Uh, I don't know. I don't, don't know how many games in the Saturn actually let you do that, but I think it's actually just straight up the Dreamcast. But this console does have network functionality. It does. Um, and it has its own keyboard, which is crazy. I think you can at least go on the internet on this console. I think this is the first console ever we actually could access the internet. But I don't know if it's the first console ever that you could actually do online gaming. I don't know everything about the Saturn, but I do know quite a lot about it. So let's look at the let's look at the back of the bottom. See if it tells you that that number again that you saw earlier. Oh, it says model number HST-3220. That's a completely different model number than what the fuck. There's like three different model numbers here. I have no idea, but okay, whatever works, right? Here's the bottom of it. Here's the inside of it. Um, so let, let's just get into like what what I'm talking about, like. What? So this this console was like ridiculously popular in Japan. It crushed the Nintendo 64 in Japan. I think it didn't crush the the PS1, but it was like in par with it a little bit. It, it was well known. It was it was as well known as like the Xbox and the PS2 was over here, or the maybe even the 360 and PS3. I don't know during North, in North America or at least at least Xbox and PS2. It was, it was like as equally popular in like in like a way. I don't know if it was if it came close to something as well as the PS1 did over in Japan, but it sold pretty fucking well and it was incredibly popular because of this little compartment back here. And what you could put in it. So, I mentioned earlier that the Sega Saturn had these memory cards which you could put your games on. Well, for me personally, I don't really use these. I just have them for show. But you plug it in, there you go. There's a memory card. But however, Sega did not just do memory cards. They also had internal RAM memory with flash data. You see that right there? That is that is an internal battery that has my Sega Saturn saved in it. So I need to be really careful not to remove that. Because as soon as you remove it and put it back in, you lose all your save data. The, I believe they only last like two years or so. I don't know. Mine lasts quite a while. But I set a calendar. I set a reminder on my calendar for every two years to like switch out these batteries. Just to be safe and put my save data on like a memory card. That I do own. But this device right here is what I really want to focus on. What the fuck is this thing? This is the Victor RG VC3 VCD player. Video CD. That's what VCD is. What the hell is a video CD? It's the same exact thing as a DVD, but in but, but on a compact disc, a CD-ROM. Yes, you heard me right. It's movies on CD-ROM discs. Usually they were they were released in jewel cases, you know, kind of like kind of like a Sega Saturn game or a PS1 game that came in multiple discs. So, and the PS1 could do the same thing. By the way, I I actually used to have a VCD adapter for my PS1. I'm not saying the PS1 could play movies, I don't know if it could, but the Saturn could have. Uh, it absolutely could have. The PS1, I don't know yet. I will have to look into that before my PS1 video. Unless there's someone out there but looking, tell me in the comments, yes it could in Japan and shit, I don't know yet. But this bad boy can, and even the uh, J the North American one can too. But I think you have to have um, one of these bad boys, which we'll talk about this guy later. But this is this is very important if you're going to get a Sega Saturn. Get one of these, it's super important, but we'll talk about that later. Um, get one of those, and you right, right away get one of those and get. Um, I can get, that, I can this up. get one of these two. Right away, right away. You want to buy this? You want to buy these two cartridges for the Sega Saturn? Uh, effective immediately once you buy a Sega Saturn. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll talk about that later, though, in the video. In case if you're curious at all about owning one. So, but that's for later. So, yeah. The Sega Saturn could play movies. Like I mentioned before, a lot of companies really pushed the Saturn. There, there was Victor. There was, I think Samsung did a little bit. There was uh, J JVC, I believe, did too. There was just a few companies out there that were like, yeah, the Saturn, buy the Saturn. And they helped Sega market it. And I think, sadly, I don't think the Sega Saturn sold like hotcakes in Japan because it's a game library. I think it sold like hotcakes in Japan because it could play videos. You have to think about it, guys. Why did the place? Why is the PlayStation 2 the most popular selling console of all time? It is. It is the highest selling console of all time. The PlayStation 2 is. The PS4 should have been, in my opinion, or the PS5 should. They, they, they probably will. But like, but why the fucking PS2? Because you could play DVDs. And it's because of the games. It's because of the DVDs. But however, positively speaking, both the Sega Saturn and PS2 have a humongous library of, of, of games, uh, especially the, the Japanese P, uh, Sega Saturn. However, my opinion, Sega Saturn is, is the better console in that 
department or category. Not saying the PS2 does not have great games on it. Of course it, of course it does. Of course it does. But to me, the one company that has made the best games ever is Sega. Okay? Just to me. Now listen, all of you out there, before you go clicking away in the comments, there's a couple things I want to say. First of all, it's just my opinion. Okay? I know I'm being biased. I'm a humongous fan of Sega. I haven't since I was a child. But, as you can see, right here in front of me, my own human hands, holding the console, I've actually experienced these games. I've actually played games on the Sega Saturn. I've actually played games on the Master System and Sega Genesis. I've heard, as you've heard, you've probably heard and seen in my previous videos. And as you will see in the future, I have, I do own a Sega Dreamcast. In fact, I've shown my Dreamcast in a few of my videos. Point is, is that I have actually experienced firsthand, first-party developed Sega titles on their actual hardware. I don't want to hear any motherfucking douchebag, child, kid, whatever you want to say, or motherfucking asshole in the comments saying, no, 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 PS2, or PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo are the best of the best, Sega doesn't have shit compared to them, or, you know, they're not as good. If you have not played a Sega console, I do not want to hear that shit, or games that they made. I don't want to fucking hear, you know, e even if you played, like, re-releases of, 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 like, some Sega games, I don't know, maybe, maybe then, okay, fine, but, like, most of the Saturn and Dreamcast games have still yet to be released, right? So I don't really want to hear it. I'm sorry, but my point is that I do not want to hear shit from anyone about the Dreamcast or the Saturn saying it's not as good as the this and that if you haven't actually played them. Because yes, they are the the best of the best in in of gaming consoles. I am fucking serious. The Sega Saturn and the Sega Dreamcast, and my honestly got opinion from first hand experience, are the best of the best in terms of the software library. In the world of gaming, um, and and even and even even possibly harder. They're not as strong as a PS4 or an Xbox or a PS3. No, but they they do some great, amazing things. Harder hardware wise for their time, they're very ahead of its time, and they're very powerful pieces of tech. This thing has has a laser built like a fucking brick. This thing will never ever die on you. I'm not even kidding. They put a lot of money into it when they were developing this thing. And because of that though, it weakened the Dreamcast's cost. So like when they made the Dreamcast, the laser was much weaker in a comparison. But yeah, seriously, it's fucking crazy. But all these fucking games I have on the which we'll get into them later on in the video, these games are incredible. These are some of the best games I've ever played in my entire life. And I cannot get into how much they're fucking golden and good. And I haven't even experienced them like too much yet, but I still think they're amazing, and I can say the same thing about the PS2 though. If you want, or PS1 even, they have some fucking great games too. I love a lot of PlayStation games. Believe me, I do. But I have yet to beat a lot of them along with PlayStation. But they just feel kind of different in comparison. When it comes to playing like a game in the Saturn Dreamcast, you get this feel of like this was a well-crafted, well-made video game for this video game machine that I'm playing right now. This is perfected. This is what gaming should be. This is great. And then when you play a game on the PS1, PS2, it's like. Okay, this kind of feels like someone else made this for this, for this piece of tech. It's more of like a, more of like a, this is supposed to be kind of like an experience in a very different way than you might expect from playing a video game. Um, that's the best way I can kind of describe it. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to say the games are bad, but there's just something kind of empty and lacking sometimes when I play it, when I play a PlayStation title. It doesn't matter if it's like, you know, second party or third party or whatever. There's just something kind of like, I don't know about this. Compared to a game made for like a Sega, a Sega hardware, I don't know, or even Nintendo, but I don't know. There's just something there. Sega and Nintendo to me made the best of the best, but I think Sega is just a little bit more stronger in that department for what they have done during during the time. They really, really showed their most funnest and bestest talents during this era in over in Japan. One hundred and million per percent true. One hundred and million per percent true. I can't stress enough. How much beauty and goodness and fun there is on the Sega Saturn. I cannot. So, with that being said, uh, let's continue going. Um, God damn, there's other things I was gonna say. Um, it's super sad that it didn't do well in North America. You know, we there during the time Tom Kalinske, my one of my favorite people ever, uh, left Sega of America, and we got a new president called Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, during one of the in an interview in 1987 or so, strictly said, "The Saturn is on our future." When people when he was asked about like, the Saturn wasn't selling well, he strictly said, "The Saturn is on our future," which is not a very smart thing to say um, because that makes it look like, "Hey, you know, you know, why are you saying that? You know, Saturn's not right now. What are you trying to say?" 
you know, the Dreamcast was in development as the Katana, I think, at the time, is why I was saying it, which is the prototype name for the, for the Dreamcast and, you know, all that stuff. But, like, you know, that's like, you know, during the Wii U era, when they were developing the Switch, Nintendo never, ever said the Wii U was on our future or, like, you know, you, you know, don't bother with the Wii U. They never, ever said that because they knew what they were doing. Bernie Sanders just, he constantly, well, I don't think Tom Clancy would have ever said that. I don't think he would have ever said that if he was still around. But yeah, Bernie Sanders basically just basically crushed any chance the center had after that here in North America. Which is sad. Plus, he had, he had a lot of control with what games came out here in North America. A lot of great, amazing titles over in Japan got left there because Bernie Sanders just did not approve. And he approved of, like, you know, only a few select titles. Granted, the ones he did approve are really good games. But I'm just saying, like, it's kind of shitty. It's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, you know, you know, you had this amazing console made by Sega, then more games should come out here in the States. Why did you not do that? Why did you just restrict so many? I don't know. It's kind of shitty, in my opinion. It, it is. And it's just very, like, you know, he basically killed the Saturn. It was kind of mostly because of him. It was mostly because of Sega of America, why the Saturn did not have a chance. And it's, it's, it's shitty. You know, they, they rushed it out. You know, developers were not done yet. And a lot of games that came out for the system had to be redone. Um, this right here is the launch packed, like, title, or titles that came for the, with the Saturday in North America uh, back in 1995 or so. Um, this is, these are not even full games. I mean, they are, but they feel like unfinished titles are just like demos. Really, it, but they are full games though, but like... They, they have a lot of glitchy errors, you know, some of them are, they're, they're, they're playable, they're playable, and they are fun, they are good, but there's definitely, like, some polish missing in terms of graphics and visuals, and some button inputs don't always work right, you know, so, like, yeah, Virtua Fire 2, Virtua Cop, and Nintendo USA all got re-released later as, like, you know, definitive versions on, on the Saturday, but I think I have Virtua Fire 2 separately, oh, God, where is it, around here somewhere, do I have Virtua Fire 2? By itself? I don't maybe I don't, but I have the first one, but like No, I don't, I don't. No wait, no wait, maybe I do in Japanese. Do I? Oh damn, I can't remember. Maybe I left it out over there. No, I don't, but Yeah, well though this this version of Virtual Fire 2 is fucking amazing though, to be fair. It is. I don't really need to rebuy it. But um yeah man, I mean Virtual Cop's not bad, but I'm just saying, like, you know, Sega really really goofed up with like rushing it out. The way that they did, and it, it is it is kinda sad. Okay, so did I already talk, uh, I talked about, talk about the controller, right? So, um, okay, so I think I kind of said everything you need to say about the Saturn. I feel like there's something I'm missing. There's the cartridge slot thing, backwards compatibility, the disk drive, or about its design. Uh, there are a lot of other unique designs out there. Remember how I mentioned in my Sega Genesis video, Sega was like putting the Mega Drive for Genesis, like everything, so people could like play it? Well, for the Saturn, it's like, I think it was just restricted to like this one design, but there's like a bunch of different color variations with like different looks on it. Like you know, there's like the there's like the H Saturn thing it's called, there's the, or 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 the Victor Saturn. There's the J JVC one. I think there's even a Samsung one. There's different versions out there of this console for sure, only in Japan and Europe and whatnot. But it is pretty unique and cool how they did that, in my opinion. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So again, it's definitely a great piece of tech. Uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. Fuck, what else is I gonna say? I can't remember. Um... Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Okay, moving on to the games. Let's go. Okay, folks. I know I said we'll, we'll be talking about games next. No, I'll save them for last because there's a lot to say. Especially if, you know, the best for last. Um, <laughs> but right now I'm talking about the accessories, right? I mentioned these before. These are the memory cards that, that comes with the Saturn. Or, no, 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 they don't come with the Saturn. You gotta buy them separately. Here's what they look like on the back. Some of them have like little, little note cards in the front. I think I have one that this has that. That you know, helps you label it at least when you own it. Uh, maybe they didn't bring it out. I don't remember. But I have um, <laughs> the controller again. And I have two more of them for whatever reason. But really, I wanna focus on um, this one accessory right here. This one is a really cool and unique one, and much like the Japanese white Sega Saturn, looks like, you know, the predecessor or the prototype to the Sega Dreamcast, if you want to, you know, call it that debatably. Uh, this controller right here might give you the same exact idea. This is the Sega Saturn 3D control pad, 
the HSS-0137. This is the Japanese version, and only came in white in Japan because it matched with the Model 2 uh, Sega Saturn unit. Analog control exclusively for use with the Sega Saturn, excellent for driving and shooting games. So, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Use the mode switch to change to and from Sega Saturn control pad functions. And there's the back of the box, and for some weird reason, the cord comes attached. I'll show you that. I'll show you that in a second. What I mean. Here's the side of the box. Yeah, I just love showing. I mean, I just think it's cool to actually have this. This is the only time I really ever be able to show it off. And uh, here's the control itself. Yeah, it's on, it's unboxed. But yeah, doesn't it look kind of familiar to you? Yeah. If you know Dreamcast, this should look immediately, immediately familiar. I know I'm not the first YouTuber to point it out either. Yes, it looks like the prototype to the Sega Genesis, or Sega Genesis. I'm so sorry for wagging. As a, as a fly, this bug. Sorry. I'm so sorry for getting that, getting that backwards. The Sega Dreamcast controller. This is a good surprise sizer. So here is the mode version, the D-pad and circle, which you can only use one or the other. Very similar to the PlayStation uh, 1 and 2 controllers, when you can only use, you know, analog or D-pad. Uh, a, B, X, Y, Z buttons. This is probably, in my opinion, the best controller, maybe, that Sega has ever made. This, no, well, I mean, I know, I love it, I love this controller, and I love, and I love the Dreamcast one a lot. Um, so, you know, actually, to be fair, for when it comes to Sega controllers, they don't have, like, a definitive, like, perfect one. They're all built really well for the games that they're made for. Like, you know how the Sega Genesis only had, like, a three-button controller? They figured out a way to make every game ever on the Genesis work with, with just those three buttons. They did have the six button controller option, but it, it was literally an option for every game. It was never required for a game, and not that I can think of. The Sega Genesis, Sega really like worked hard to be like, no, 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 the six button controller is not required for every game. You can use every game for the three button controller, and it, like it works really well for like most games, in my opinion. You know, you don't really have to worry about the uh, six button. Six, I prefer the six button though. Much like I prefer this this controller right here. So I don't know if I love this controller more, the Genesis six button controller more, or the Dreamcast controller more. I just I just can't pick an absolute favorite. But this one technically has the most buttons on it, so it might be this one. Just just because of that that alone. It's just a really comfor comfortable controller. The analog stick is like you know a concave like eyeball type deal here, but it works really well for like you know what it's supposed to do. Um, I love how colorful it looks. I love all this stuff. It looks great. And uh, check this out. Look. I don't know why the heck Sega had this design in in mind. I'm not sure what this would have been used for. Maybe they were going to release like a wireless adapter for the Saturn because they really wanted to do wireless gaming. The, the CEO of Sega Japan did. I remember uh, reading about that. I don't know why the heck <laughs> the cord comes unattached. It's kind of confusing and weird. It's like, why? I don't know. But I love that controller to death. I think it's a great controller. Um, and then two more very important accessories I recommend buying for the Sega Saturn um, and almost immediately. Uh, and they're not made by Sega. They're not. They're not made. They're not made by Sega. They're fan made, but they're huge and they look a lot like memory cards. These two things right here. So what the fuck are these? All right, these are the action replay cartridges for the Sega Saturn, but they're a little more than that. This is not action replay. Uh, not the same idea as this. So what this does is that. Maybe you should may maybe get this first if you want to buy your Saturn games with the Saturn first and not burn them uh, on a disc. Maybe buy this first. Let me explain what this is first. This is the Action Replay Plus 4 megabyte, 4 megabytes, I think, auto. Suitable for the sake of Saturn. Action Replay Plus, 4 memory card, 4 memory expansion card, blah, 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 blah. It basically lets your Saturn become uh, region free. Uh, so, something that like is kind of common for the sake of Saturn that a lot of Excuse me, I'm sorry. YouTubers may talk about when the owner setter is getting it, is getting it, you know, mod chipped or mod, you know, putting a mod chip in it to play any starter games on it ever, region free it. But you have to do that. All you have to do is buy this thing, open up the box, stick it in, bam, there you go. Now you have. A region free Sega Saturn. Plus, it has a ton of memory on it. Way more than these have. Yeah, I'm not kidding. A lot more. I highly recommend buying this almost immediately after buying a Saturn. Because chances are, if you want to save your, your games right away, these batteries, die, they die out. So you're going to have to buy um, 
Sorry, the, uh, oh, shoot, these batteries, I think they're C2302s, whatever the heck they're called, that go in here. They're pretty common for Sega. Like, you know, whenever I think Sega, I think this, this battery, you know, I think they're uh, a part of the Sega CD's, like, mega, the Sega CD memory card as well has those, has those batteries in them. The, you know, Saturn has it, the Dreamcast has it for its internal memory clock, the Sega, what was it called, the Sega, um, Dreamcast VMUs use the same kind of battery. So, yeah, Sega uses that battery for almost, like, anything, whatever the heck, they can use it, so. Yeah, they've been using it for, like, all, the, all their tech, pretty much. I think it's the C2032 battery, but yeah, this thing is worth it, so I have a lot of my save data on here, for sure, that I, for games I finished. Mwah, I love this, I love this thing, this thing is, is a godsend, but it does not let you play burn games. That's the catch, it lets you play, you know, North American, Japanese, European titles, for a Japanese Dreamcast, yes, this works with my North American games, obviously, but no, it, uh, it does not let you play burn games. For that, you're going to need a completely different cartridge. You're going to need this. This is called the Action Replay, uh, Mega Plus, wait, Action Mega Play Plus, with Pseudo Saturn. That's what you're going to want. I'll explain that in just a moment. Hold on. All right. So let me show you what I mean, right? So, what the hell is Pseudo Saturn? I mean, it sounds like fake Saturn. So, Saturn basically lets you play every single game ever you can imagine for the sake of Saturn that's on a disc. This is a must have cartridge for any Saturn owners. I agree. This single cartridge opens up a whole new world for the Saturn. It allows you to play games from any region. I also switch the one memory by from memory by memory expansion. So, Saturn, wait, wait, what? This cartridge you cannot see? Okay, so I don't know why it mentions that. Oh, because I oh I think I know why. Because some Saturn games require more data to like run. Some Saturn games actually require these cartridges. There's like a fighting game I know of that actually does because some of these have like built-in RAM too. Not, not not only can they save your data, but they have like more RAM. You know that that you can give the console, which is pretty cool in my opinion for Sega to do something like that. But um yeah, basically what that means is that some Saturn games require more, more RAM to run. This automatically has that. Oh, this guy does too. This is, you know, for 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 memory card. Right, yeah, of course it does. Yes, yeah, see, for memory card, right, yeah, card expansion. So, with these two cartridges at your side, you're you're set to go. I would buy these immediately. You know, and if you don't have the money, you need to buy them both together. They're not too expensive. I believe these are only thirty bucks nowadays. If I if I'm not right, if I'm not wrong, um, on what was that website? Well, anyways, the action make up. Just look up pseudo Saturn cartridge, pseudo Saturn cartridges. You should be able to find them. Action replay plus, pluses. These go around fifty bucks. Last I checked, but I don't think they're that much nowadays. They're not too expensive, and they're definitely worth it if you want to play. You know, if you don't want to buy Saturn games right away, you just want to burn some some discs to save some money to play it that way. I would recommend buying this right away and buying some batteries for your Saturn. Those batteries are really cheap too. So that's your cheapest beginnings. To a Sega Saturn, is I would recommend buying a Japanese Sega Saturn because I believe those are the cheapest ones to get, and then I would get a Pseudo Saturn with those with those batteries because the internal data is very limited, but it's not too bad. For like most games, you can maybe play like up to ten Saturn games like at a time, um, with just the internal like clock battery. But thankfully, with this, you can copy data, you know, delete data, you can switch around data with this guy, you can do all sorts of crazy things. You can have cheat codes with this guy for your starting games. It's, it's amazing. I love it. So, yeah, that's... These two things are a godsend for the Sega Saturn. Get them right away. I'm, I'm still considering maybe having somebody out there mod my Sega Saturn one day to, to have it be completely region-free. However, I don't know for sure if I want to do that yet. Um... You know, without having to rely on these. I know I have no idea. I have no idea at the moment. That's something I'll look into in the future. Right now, again, I don't really know yet. So, yeah. But anyways, um, okay, so moving on. We're finally gonna get to the games. We're finally gonna get to the games after the end of break. Hopefully I can remember to cut this part out. Mm. Not right in the hut. But yeah. Okay guys, here we go. So, where should we start? Well, I'm trying to think. What was the first game I personally ever, oops, ever bought and played for the Sega Saturn? Because I can't remember what it was right now. Uh, I think it might have been, it might have been this. I don't remember. Like I said, these games are amazing. They're a lot of fun. You should play them. They're great. Um, I already talked about these guys, so we're moving on from that. Um, let's see. There's, oh my God, there's some really big iconic ones. 
there's some... I, I don't know, I guess we can really focus on... Which this is a game I already talked about, so it would make, kind of make sense just to do this now. Just to get out, out, out of the way. Daytona, yeah. Daytona USA again. This is the Japanese version. This is the more completed version, I think, that has actually, you know, fixed and finished and everything. This game has a lot of charm. It has a lot of fun. It is an amazing race. I love the music. I love the atmosphere. It's like, do 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 Daytona. You know, there's theme song. I'm pretty sure I'm going to play it at some point in this video. Yeah, you can't get out of your head once you hear it. Definitely a Saturn classic. It's only a one-player game, too, which kind of sucks. I know, I know. And the arcade game can let you play up to eight people. It's, it's like, what the heck? Maybe the idea is that, you know, if you have, like, a link cable, you can play with other people, but still. Kind of kind of lame that you can't just do it out of the box, but, yeah. The Tony USA is great. Um, next one, th this one is a pretty important uh, horror game made by a very creative uh, person um, who's no longer with us. He passed away in 2008. Uh, this is a very iconic game on the Saturn. Depending on how well on how well you know the console, it's debatable because this, this was also released on the PS1 and released on the 3DO. But the developer was like Sega was like Sega focused. He was like I'm strictly exclusively working for Sega after this his experiences with this game's release. And that game is D. This is a very important game for the Sega Saturn. It's a very important iconic game. So important, in fact. I actually own not just the North American copy, but I also own the Japanese version of the game too because I, I have a lot of respect for this game. I also have it on PC. It's one of my favorite games on Saturn. One of my favorite corner. Oh, well, yeah, it is technically a horror game. Um, it's a very uniquely designed game, much you know similar to Shenmue, but it doesn't play like Shenmue. Well, you know, it doesn't really play like Shenmue. It's it's its own thing. My point is is that this game is a huge, huge, huge deal. So who is the guy that made this game? His name is Kenji Eno. K-E-N-J-I -E space E-N-O. He passed away in 2008, unfortunately. But he made he, he really shined during Sega's Saturn era. His excuse me, his most iconic games ever are on this console. And D was his very first game ever made, and it was incredible. Uh, I, I, if anyone out there uh, really cares, I really highly strongly recommend you to check out the Sega Talk, Sega Bits' Sega Talk episode on D. There's so much love to this game that they talk about, and you got you need to hear it. And you also you also learn all about Kenji Eno's uh, journey. Um, what happens is that PlayStation really screwed him over, so, you know, he said, he's I'm never going to figure out this ever again, and he meant it. He stuck by it, and, he's, and, he, and he stuck with Sega. And at a press conference, he, t he took the PS1 logo and morphed it into the Sega Saturn logo, and that's how he how he revealed that. But the I, mean, I don't want to spoil what the D means, but it's really really cool. It, I'll I'll just say it, uh, it has to do with something kind of iconic, that has to do with horror. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. Nothing else besides that. Um, you know, it, it's 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 like it's actually it stands for a word of some kind. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna say what all this though. But it's about this girl named Laura. And she explores this very spooky castle that her father made. And she's trying to discover mysteries to her past. Her father's kind of responsible for all of it. It's crazy stuff. It's crazy, crazy stuff. I love, I love the marketing of the US version. Look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous looking box? Look at all those. Look at all those. Like you know, look at that. It looks so cool how, how they marketed this. At least I think so. There's all the different ways. <laughs> all the different words you can stand for. That is so cool. Which it doesn't stand for any of these. It stands for something else. Uh, you'll find out. But, uh, yeah, and then here's the Japanese version. And on the, on the Dreamcast, there's a sequel to this game, D2, and I, I freaking love D2 so far. I haven't beaten it yet, but it's a very, very intense uh, horror game. And it's, it's like, oh my goodness, this is very good. Um, yeah, D2 is nothing to cough at, neither is D1. They are great, great games. Great, great games. Um, next up, let's see. Oh, okay. There is one that comes to mind. It's, it's a bit of a goofy one. I might as well get this game out of the way now and talk about it. Because it's a game that I was really looking forward to playing on the Saturn. And I did enjoy it, but it's a very kind of like, I don't know about this one game. It's very goofy, it's very silly. It is fun, but just very difficult and very hard to control at times. Bug. Bug for the Sega Saturn. This is supposed to be like a big iconic platformer of a game for the Saturn. And believe it or not, there was not a lot of there's not a lot of Sonic love for the Saturn for many different reasons. It was mostly Sonic Team's fault. They were more focused on other pri other IPs. And Yuji Naka, Yuji Naka wanted to take a big back seat. He wanted nothing to do with Sonic for a little bit. 
And he was more focused on something more iconic, which we're we'll talking about, we'll look to that guy later. But Bug is a very kind of important game for the Saturn, but it's not at the same time, it's kind of lame. It's it's, it's just easily forgettable. I do love the character, much of Sonic, and I do love the games like Atmosphere and Setup and Themes. It's a very, like, you know, comedy, like, uh, you know, it's it's a very, like, comedic type kind of game. Like, like it's set it up to be something really, really, really fun and great, but the execution is, is, is not the best. Straight from the Pooh's back, Pooch's back to you, a flea br- what the heck? These fake reviews on the back of the game, I thought he stunk, but my aunt liked him. Look at this straight what the hell is all <laughs> Yeah, look. You can take advantage of pause and, and read all that. It's kind of fun. If you want to. But yeah. Uh, yeah, see, that, that's what I mean. They, they actually put a lot of like humor into it. Which is fantastic, but like... Oh, yeah, they have the same enemy in the front and the back. <laughs> that's okay. I really like this game, but it's hard to get through. Um, I, 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 I had to put in cheat codes just to get through it. <laughs> I must confess, I know. And I'm trying to find more online I can put on later, but that, but, but I digress. Alright, so. I'm saving one of the best for last, so hold on. Uh, this game has a lot of charm. And I haven't unfortunately got to play a lot of it yet. But it's a very solid game for the Sega Saturn. A very, very good one. Um, that's very underrated, criminally underrated. And one that definitely does not get talked about a lot. A Clockwork Night. It's kind of like, you know, a Toy Story style kind of or like idea like story idea of a game uh but it has a completely different story with it it's about a toy knight trying to save his 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 love i think you know like you know like you know, the classic video game premise but yeah um you won't believe these are just toys every night at the st at the stroke of 12 the wind up night his name is pepper roche roche and his world spring to life into this to the delicate singing voice of the clockwork Cream princess so the princess is kidnapped by mysterious villain um, if an evil spell is casted, not ever must rescue the princess before daylight, or there will be no tomorrow in this magical world, world of toys. That's pretty cool. So, if you want to read all that, take a minute to go ahead. Um, pause the video if you can see that. Okay. Yeah, Clever Knight is very, very, very good. It's, it's again, very underrated, but if you know the Saturn, this game should be very iconic to you. So, it, to me, it is. Uh, and there's two of them, too. Much like Boggy and Clever Knight both have a sequel games. Which I don't own them physically right now. I have them burned on a disc, but I don't actually own them yet. Um, but yeah, they're pretty cool. Oh yeah, I forgot I grabbed this game. I guess it just gives me a chance to talk, talk about Dragon Ball some more. There are there are some Dragon Ball Z games for the Saturn. This is one of them. This is really, I think this is one of the more iconic ones. It's not too bad of a game, but it's not a great fighter either. There's not, much, there's not really much to say about it. There really isn't. It's just called... Oh look it, it's Goku, <laughs> Vegeta... Hercule, Boo, and B on the back. That's funny. I think this got released right when Dragon Ball Z ended, like like the anime. It must have, cause like yeah, you know, 1995 and 1996, yeah. And then there's the that's what it's called. It's called uh, Shin Bu Tohu Den, which I don't know what that means at the moment. But yeah, it's 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 an alright game. There's not much to say about it. It's just kind of here. I don't know why I grabbed it. But yeah. Um. Okay, so this game right here. Ugh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of it. Virtual Fighter Remix. Now, remember, if you guys have seen my uh, Sega 32X episode, I was gushing about how great Virtual Fighter was on the 32X. I think I might have mentioned this game a little bit. I'm pretty sure I did. And I must have said I don't like it that much back then, too. It's true. This is not controller. There's just something wrong with this version compared to the original. There's, I don't know what it is. They just did a really bad job with it. But Virtual Fighter 2? Holy crap, they, they did, they did a, I already mentioned it earlier in the video, they did a great job with the Virtua Fighter 2, but Virtua one, one, Fighter 1 Remix, not so much, unfortunately. It's not as good as the 3 Chuck version. Um, oh yeah, believe it or not, this is the console that Tomb Raider was supposed to, was supposed to uh, be the flagship, like, game series to. I'm not even kidding. It, it wasn't, you know, we all think Tomb Raider as, like, an iconic, you know, PS1 or PlayStation series. But really, it was supposed to be an iconic Sega series. I'm not kidding. The uh, CEO, or the, the CEO, the creator of Tomb Raider, I don't know his name, he was a big Sega fan. So he really, really, really pushed for Tomb Raider to be on the Saturn. However, I think it was like one of his, like, uh, you know, a, a executives and you know, chief or one of his, like, agents or something told him, hey man, you know, the PS1's doing a lot better. So uh, you should definitely, definitely, definitely put, consider putting Tomb Raider on the PS1. He said, okay, and that's why Tomb Raider launched with or basically kicked off with the ps1 but 
The rest, like I think Tomb Raider 2, 3, maybe even 4 and 5 are all on the Dreamcast. So at the same time, he still put Tomb Raider on, on the Dreamcast at least. And I was very, 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 very respectful for him, for him, him res respecting for him to do that. He still cared about Sega. He still wanted Sega to have, like, you know, Tomb Raider on there. Um. Oh my god, I cannot believe I forgot to talk about this guy. Uh, um. Alright, um, next up we have, okay, we'll get, we'll get to that one after this one. Next up we have a game which I talked about in my Sega CD review. I told you guys I own an actual legit physical copy of Snatcher. However, this is, you know, it's all in Japanese. It's not as good as the Sega CD version. Snatcher. Because there's some censorships and whatnot, and it's just not as, like, you know. But it does have some very beautiful artwork, at least. And I, I love this game. If you want to hear me talk about more about Snatcher, check out the Sega Bits episode of Snatcher. Actually, we have, like, a whole section at the end talking talking about the game and um i also talk about snatcher in my sega cd episode of the, of the same series so if you want to hear me talk more about snatcher how much i love it um go ahead and watch my video on sega cd or watch sega bits's sega talk episode on snatcher oh my god which i recommend that i, I actually i actually uh um requested them to do that episode which I'm, and i'm glad they did that's a very uh very awesome thing th thing to me um so yeah this guy right here Sega Tan San Chiro, Sega Tan San Chiro, Sega Ta San Chiro, yeah, Sega Ta San Chiro. He was very, very, very iconic over in Japan during the Saturn's era. He helped, I think he also helped some last Saturn's. He's basically this badass <laughs> dude and just some, just some, like, you know, just some white gi that comes up and kicks her ass and tells you to play Sega Saturn. That's, <laughs> I'm not kidding. He's, that's just who he is. He's just this badass guy. Tells you to play Saturn. Unfortunately, this game this, this game is not that great. It's just a collection of mini games, and they're built kind of okay. But it's it's very thoughtful. At least they made made a game out of the guy, and that's pretty great. But his last commercial was about like him defending Sega. It's the launch for for the Dreamcast. There's a missile that does, that gets launched to Sega HQ, and he basically risks his life, <laughs> you know, stopping the missile. It's fucking crazy and awesome and funny all at the same time. Sigaton Sanchino is iconic. He's huge. Like, seriously, go check out his commercials. They are great. Alright. Okay. Um. Next up, I guess I'll talk about. Um. Hmm. Let me see. I have. Oh my god. I brought so many games I'm talking about. Holy crap. Oh man. I'm gonna say the one for later. Okay. Next up, I guess I'll talk about this one right here. This, this is a very good, good game. Virtua Cop. It's very similar to the arcade version, which again, much like the Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis and the Sega CD and even 32X, the Saturn carry out the same tradition of, of giving you the arcade experience at home in a very like close to perfect way. And yes, I, I would say the Sega Saturn does a great job with that. And so does the Dreamcast, especially the Dreamcast. But Virtua Cop won and Virtua Cop can find it's in here somewhere. Virtua Cop number mm. Oh, we made it grab it. I guess, okay, well, I, still have, I do have Virtua Cop 2, but I don't think I grabbed it for this video. That's funny. I grabbed every, like, pretty much every other game I, under the sun I own, but I just didn't bother grabbing Virtua Cop 2. I guess because I haven't played it much. But yeah, Virtua Cop's great. It's fun. You basically, uh, it's like a first person uh, ar arcade kind of shooter game. You know, you, you point your gun or your controller, like, and whatever to the screen, and you have to get, get the bad guys. And don't shoot the characters in white because they are, they are the innocent people. They are the hostages. You see that one guy right there ducking the cover? Don't kill those guys. This game is fun. I think it's also made by Yu Suzuki. Or AM2, much like... Yeah, it is. AM2. Now, who the hell is Yu, Yu Suzuki? Well, how dare you ask? Because I'm pretty sure I mentioned him a lot already. He, he's creator Shenmue. But most of his uh, most of his talent was really shown with, with the Saturn, with Daytona USA, Virtua Cop, and other games kind of kind of like that. So, yeah, he made a lot of great games. Um, you know, Virtua Fighter, Virtua Cop, uh, Daytona USA, you know, those are all his, 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 uh, his company, AM2. He also had a hand, I think, in Sonic the Fighters. I think AM2 made Sonic the Fighters, but which was never released on um, Saturn. So, you know, there's that for you. Okay, this right here is the Crown Jewel game uh, on AM2. Do I have fun? I never had any fun diapers. I don't know. Okay. This game right here is the Crown Jewel on the Saturn in terms of fighting games. This was like Sega's answer to Super Smash Brothers, pretty much, and it's a and it's a series that they should have continued, or at least a name they should continue. 
Fighters Mega Mix. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is a collab of fighting characters, Sega fighting characters, in one game. You have Russian fighting characters, fighting Viper characters, and you have some like other characters. Yeah, yeah, and there are some Sonic characters in this game. And there's even like characters from like da 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 from Daytona USA. You can play as the freaking Hornet Hornet car. Yes, in this game, I believe. It was this guy right here. You can play as this guy right here in Fighters Mega Mix. I'm not kidding you, it is awesome, it's hilarious, I freaking love it. But, oh yeah, this is my burn copy, I have the real one over over here in this, uh, see, yeah, AM2. There they are, I actually, have, I actually have the real copy over there. This is the US version I put inside this case, the Japanese one's in that, uh, in my Sega, um, what's it called, my Sega, like, uh, my, my Sega storage thing, this thing, that has my Sega games in it. Um, which I'll show you that later. I think I showed that off in my Sega CD uh, video from River Raid. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> my first Mega Mix is, is, is great. So, um, so two of the games I really want to talk about are games that I really want to play more on Saturn. And one of these games is a game that I grew up with watching my mom play a bit. Uh, we have Riven, Mist, and Riven. It's mostly Mist. Uh, Mist is a very, it was a very like, iconic point and click game back in the 90s. My mom loves this game. And I was like, oh, it's cool, it's in the center. I bought it, and I, I, I bought it, I own it, I haven't played it much yet. But yeah, the sequel to Mist, Ribbon, is also on the Sega Saturn. So that's that's pretty cool. At least in at least in Japan it was. I don't know if it was, in, if it was released in this North America, I don't think so. But I think the game is in mostly in English. I can't remember right, but I cannot remember right right now. I don't know, there's a giant bug right there. Interesting, I really got to play more of these games. I really, really, really do. Um, but yeah. Alright, moving on. Oh, this is a really, really, really cool one. The Legend of Oasis, aka Beyond Oasis 2, aka The Legend of Thorn, The Legend of Thor 2. I love this game. I'm pretty sure I gushed. A lot. Yeah, that's a custom disc I found online somewhere. Isn't that cool? I'm pretty sure I gushed about this game before in my Sega Genesis episode about Beyond Oasis, how much I love it. I love its sequel too. Its sequel is just like Beyond Oasis, but there's so much more fluidity to it, much more better controlling, much more better graphics. It's just it's such a beautiful game. So uh, that's something else I did not really need. I did not really have a chance to talk about yet with the Saturn, is that when, when Sega was developing the Saturn, um, they didn't really fully understand that Nintendo and Sony and other companies were trying to make a big jump into 3D. They were under the understanding that like they thought companies were just going to stick to 2D, but they perfected 2D. Games that were like, you know, basically 3D, but in 2D, 2.5D, or they looked great in sprite quality. And this is one of those games that are, is, that's a perfect example of that. You know, um, if you're, if hopefully most of you out there are very familiar with Sonic Mania, you know, a very current Sonic game. So, so, so most games on the Sega Saturn that are 2D look like Sonic Mania. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like 2D gaming perfected. One game that comes to mind, which is like gorgeous, gorgeous Sega Saturn game, is Guardian Heroes. And um, that's one game I wish I owned uh, with the case and everything, but I don't. Guardian Heroes is one game I really, really, really want to get one day for the Japanese version at least. But yeah, that's another good one. The yeah, Legend of White Oasis is beautiful. Sega did Sega did their best with you know developing 3D games for, for the system. They put another processor. The Saturn has two processors in it, two random ass processors in it, and I don't think anyone out there has actually utilized its second processor yet. I don't know yet. But yeah, there's that game too. All right, so speaking of the whole double processor thing, uh, I know I keep mentioning this game. I'm gonna have to remember to put this footage up right here. This has probably been brought up a lot. Uh, or I mean, again, if you know the sound, and hopefully you know about this. I, I keep talking about this wonderful game. Shenmue was originally going to be made and released for the Sega Saturn. If you look at the footage right now, I mean, think back. I mean, that may not look impressive to all of you out there, but think back to 1995, 1996, think back to PS1 and Nintendo 64. This is very impressive on a, on a technical level. It really is. Maybe it's not as good as like what could be on the N64, but holy shit, like, if you've actually understand how big of a huge technological le a leap in technology Shenmue is already at the Dreamcast, that compared to this is like crazy. Like, I would have loved to see Shenmue on the Saturn. I'm glad it isn't, to be fair. I love that it's a Dreamcast classic game and everything. But still, uh, that's, oh, I'm so, oh, Jesus Christ. That's no disrespect to the Saturn version, though. The Saturn version looks amazing. I, I kind of wish it was at the same time. I'm not saying I'm fully, I'm fully against the idea, but like, you know, it fits so well. The Dreamcast is just a much more powerful looking game and everything on the Dreamcast. But like, you know, I, I personally think it got, it got the better deal there, but, um, 
Nothing against the Sarah because I love this console. It's just, you know, Dreamcast wouldn't be quite the same without Shenmue in some ways, but like, yeah, no, but seriously, if it wasn't on the Sarah, that'd be great too. Okay, next up is this 2D masterpiece of a game. One of the most beautiful art artistically games I've ever played in my life. A stall. I love a stall to death. Oops, I dropped it. This is not an official US version of the game. Uh, this is a burned disc version, but I love, love, love a stall. It reminds me, uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but it reminds me, uh, like, if Don Bluth, the guy who made uh, Little Imp for Time, The Secret of Nim, uh, Space Ace, and Dragon's Quest, I think, uh, made uh, another video game, one that was more like, you know, one that's like a 2D platformer, it would be this game right here. It just gives me that kind of vibe. I don't know, oh, 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 sorry about that, sorry about that, guys. Um, I don't know why, but there's just something about like Stall that's very Don Bluthy to me. But I love this game to death, and it's so damn cool and fun and good. It's really freaking hard. It is two players, if you forgot about that. You can play as a Stall, and yes, this is this is the second player, the bird. Um, it basically helps you out, but it's a very difficult game. It's a very great game. No save system or anything. It's just run and go. Um, but TMA is a good fucking game, though. I really want to play more of it later. I'm, I can't even make it past level two. I know it's that hard, but damn, it's really, really good. Oh man, guys, this next one is a huge, huge, huge deal for the Saturn. This one's really beautiful. Um, I'm just going to put it up. And a lot of you out there may have no idea what this game is. But I'm expecting there's that like low percentage of you out there freaking out maybe. Going, like, oh my god, you have that game. This is a very important game uh, for the Saturn. Not famous at all. Not big at all. But it does something very beautiful and very thoughtful years and years and years and years ahead of its time this is this is a video game believe it or not that's designed for the blind yes i'm serious if you cannot see this is the game made for well, hopefully you're not watching my video no offense no offense i'm just saying but if you know somebody who knows japanese very well who can't see this is the game to get for them it's called Real sound. Real sound. And there's a whole commercial to this game and everything. And guess who it's developed by? I'll give you one hint, guys. One hint. It's not you, Suzuki. That's my other hint. Here's my hint. You ready? Yeah, it's developed by Kenji Ino. Kenji Ino, guys. The same guy that made D. The same guy that made, uh, well, D2 and Enemy Zero, which is a game we'll talk about later. He made real sound. A very thoughtful game, way to have it seven. A game made for people who cannot even even see. That's fucking nuts. That is beautiful and so thoughtful and great and awesome. I just it's a shame it wasn't released here in the US. It really should have been. Look at that, it's gorgeous. And it comes with, believe it or not, this is also weird. It comes with these seeds. Yes, it comes with seeds and you can plant a tree with them. Granted, they don't work anymore, obviously, they're dead. But it's a whole part of the, you know, experience of, like, growth and everything. It's, again, I cannot stress this enough, guys. You guys out in, in there, some Braille, you can push your fingers to. Crazy stuff. Crazy, wonderful things. These cards it comes with of, of, of the sky. I don't know what that's for, but that's really cool. Guys, again, I cannot stress. I'm getting a little emotional just thinking about it. Like, this is such a beautiful thing. That a man out there actually did this. That um, it's just crazy. And here's the uh, slip cover with clouds on it. Again, guys, I'm telling you, I cannot stress this enough. Um, if you guys have the time, please. Uh, well, if you're watching my video, hopefully you do. Oh no! Oh no! I broke my slip cover a little bit. Oh no! Uh, if you guys have the time, please, please, please check out Sega Bits. Sega Bits is Sega Talk episode on Kenji Eno and D and everything. Seriously, they, they do the guys such great justice talking about his his work and his legacy. You need to let you need to check it out. It's it's a great great uh, video in my opinion. That's just so freaking beautiful. Real sound. What a great great idea for a game. Okay, next up is our iconic blue Sega boy with spines. He didn't really have a good run in the Saturn, but he still has some games. Oh, yeah. You probably all heard of this one. You've all probably heard of this one, and hopefully a lot of you out there have heard of this one. It's just, this is the best one out of the bunch. 
uh, the, the Sonic Saturn, sort of, uh, trilogy, basically. Yeah, and I kind of like all these games. Uh, well, at least two of them I do. Um, one of them not so much. Um, and it's great that there's at least something sonically for the Saturn. It's just, it's a shame that, you know, there's no actual, like, dedicated game. We were going to get Sonic Extreme. I think I think a lot of you Sonic fans out there know that story by now. A lot of you Sega fans out there, hopefully you guys heard of the story of Sonic Extreme. It is quite a messy story. Again, at the time, Yuji Naka did not really work with, with Sonic Team. He was more of like an overseer. He was kind of just, he's kind of just came and went. Did his own thing. He did his own, he was working on Knights and Burning Rangers. Oh my god, Burning Rangers! Oh my god, we got to Burning Rangers uh, later. But um, this game is burningly good. I know, it's amazing. I love Burning Rangers. But, um, Sonic Jam is the one I really kind of want to focus on. And this one right here. I think I, I think I talked about it a little bit in my, uh, Sega Genesis video. That I did not like Sonic 3 Blast for the Sega Genesis. I do not like that game. But I love, kind of love the Saturn version. It's still very difficult to play through. But it's much more fluid, better to control. A little bit more, like, you know, it's a little bit more well put together of a game. It's got great musical choices. It has great graphics. I nothing against the original... Mega Drive or Genesis version of the game soundtrack. I love the original soundtrack to Sonic Game Blast. Mostly because most of those songs got converted into Sonic Adventure. But yeah, it's a beautiful game. It really, really is. This version's not not too bad. It's really, really, really good stuff. Like when when you think, oh well, there goes the case. I forgot it's kind of broken. When you think uh, Sonic on the Saturn, this is probably the game you should think about because it's 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 like the Sonic game for the Saturn. It really is. Because, uh, you know, it's the better version out of the two, and it's 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 fun. It's a really, really good game. But, um, Sonic R over here. Sonic R. I'm not that big of a fan of Sonic R. Hold on, no, we'll, we'll talk about Sonic R in a little bit. I mean, just, uh... Oh, no, I fell apart. Jesus, oh my, can I get together today? Okay, there we go with this video. Um, yeah, guys, Sonic R, I'm not a fan of Sonic R. I'm not a big fan of it. Not at all. Do not really like Sonic R. It's a buggy game. It doesn't control great. Race for the Gold with Sonic Kids Pals. I much prefer Sonic Riders. That's a game I cannot wait to play, talk about in my GameCube episode. Very hard to keep a very great game. I love this logo though, that they had time. Project Sonic, that's so fucking cool. Uh, Sonic Jam has the same logo on it, I think, on the back. Uh, no, it, but it's, it's in the mail. Oh, yes, it is, right there. Right there, that's really fucking cool. But yeah, that was cool. And Sonic R, you know, it tried to do a lot right, but just it just didn't succeed in my opinion. I, th I like the soundtrack. I think, you know, Super Sonic Racing, King of the Sunshine, iconic songs. It's really grown to me now, more so than before. And apparently the, the GameCube release version of this game is, is built better on Sonic Gems Collection. I do not like either one, so I don't really know what's the difference. But apparently it's supposed to be better. Just not a fan, I'm sorry. But Sonic Jam here is my freaking jam! This is a great compilation of Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles. It really is. It really, really is. Uh, there's that. There's that fucking cool ass logo again. Um, it's 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 great. You know, you have this prototype 3D Sonic World that you can run around in with tails. That's pretty fun. Um, you have Sonic yep, Sonic One, Two, Three, Knuckles. There's easy and normal modes and original modes. Is the original, normal, and easy? I don't know what the difference between normal and original is. Original mode is probably just the original version of the game, but what's normal mode supposed to be? I don't know. But easy mode is obviously easy mode for three games. But yeah, and plus, they're like different builds of the games with like... It's like, imagine playing Sonic 1, kind of, or Sonic 2 or Sonic 3 on the PS1 on like a disc. Like, there's segments when you like, you know, when like the music changes and the disc kind of loads the music again and stuff like that and sound effects. It's weird. It's like very, very weird. But it's really, really cool at the same time how they actually made this. Uh, I, I love this game. I love this compilation. It's fantastic. I give it an, an S tier in my Sonic uh, tier video. I, I love it. I think Sonic James is great. I think it's great. I really, really do. Not the best in the Saturn, but it's a great compilation. It's probably not even the best Sonic compilation, but it's still fantastic. Okay, moving on. Uh, another... Okay. We have some really good ones coming up. Um, but first and foremost, I really want to talk about this random one I have, because I've been really into the, into the anime recently. They made a game of Initial D for the Sega Saturn. I don't think I've, I've even played this yet, and I fucking haven't. <laughs> I'm, just show, I'm just showing it, because I really, like, I really like the show, I think it's cool, they made a game. Great, Initial D, awesome, okay, <laughs> shit, I fucking forgot, I haven't even played this game yet, oh my god. I gotta keep watching the anime too, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, 
I finally got started watching Comedy Bebop recently. I know I'm late. Um, uh, yeah, I've been sitting on that for years. Um, but yeah, initially it's good. Uh, let's see, moving on to a very, 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 two very, very big ones. Well, okay, you know what? I've been knocking this one for a while. I really should just talk about it get out of the way. This is, oh, no, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, I forgot about this one. This is a game that I played actually on the Nintendo 64 first with a very close childhood friend of mine. I believe his name is Rini. I haven't heard from him in years. I have no idea how he's doing. But I remember finally being at his house and he showed me this game and he played and he played it with me and it was a lot of fun. Rampage World Tour. This is a badass fun uh, you know, wrecking game. You can play as like giant monsters. I'm ho I'm hopefully a lot of you out there familiar with Rampage. There's a movie off the game for crying out loud. But yeah, Rampage is fucking badass. Look at that. You get to destroy shit. I play this version's fantastic. It really is. I, I played the hell out of it when I first bought this, because well, you know, childhood memories and everything. Tears come to my eyes just thinking about that. But yeah, there's that game. Next up is a very big game on the Saturn. A very big horror game that I think a lot again, if you're familiar with the Saturn, you probably know what this game is. Deep Fear. Sega's big scary game. That's similar to Resident Evil, but it's its own unique thing. Um, unfortunately, I never had a North American release. It was released in Europe and, and in Japan only. But there's fans out there actually gave us the unofficially released uh, US version, American North American version that I had burned on these discs here. That I'm playing it through uh, through these discs. I'm still in the very beginning of the game. Uh, it's definitely a game that like kind of requires a god if you're going to play it. But it's it's badass stuff. And again, I'm going to show you my official games later. In fact, I might do that right now. Before I get to... No, well, I'll do it in a little bit. So next up we have Enemy Zero. The last game that I own that Kenji Ino has made. Um, I actually own it officially too. Where's that guy? Aha, here it is. I think this has the, the burned... Oh, but they're really... Uh, somebody made these for me. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Enemy Zero. And I believe this case has the official discs. Yes, these are, these are, these are the official ones. Um, however, you know, this is obviously the uh, Japanese version. I don't know if this game got released in the U.S. or not. I don't know. But it has the same exact protagonist as D, uh, Laura. But this does not feel like a D2 or a D1.5. This, this is its own side story. This is like an alien-inspired game. It, it's very alien. Very, very, very. Like like, like, like the, uh, oh shit, the uh, Ridley Scott movie. Yes, Alien or Aliens or James Cameron. Very, it's very oh, more so Alien. It's a really cool first-person like survival horror game. Uh, I haven't even seen the monster yet in the game. In fact, I think that's the whole point. He's supposed to be invisible. But it's a really cool game that he made. It's really unique, really great, you know, really great sound design and controls and everything. I love it, love it, love it. I've barely played it, but I want to keep playing more of it. There's some screenshots of, you know, what the game gives you an idea of, you know, what the game's supposed to be like. There's Laura that is a very spooky shot with her. There's a dark hallway room. Yep, that's most of the game, pretty much. As far as I know, at least the beginning part. There's some more screenshots of some characters and whatnot. Oh, that's the first guy to get killed, like right in the beginning opening cutscene. So sorry if it's a spoiler, but it's not much of a spoiler because it's the first thing you see. But yeah, great shit, man. Great shit. Enemy Zero. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. Enemy Zero has a disc zero. It has four discs, but disc zero, I know, it's like the only game I can think of that has a has a disc, disc zero. Disc, disc zero here might be exactly what you think it is. It's it's kind of like a demo disc. It just shows you like, you know, like cinematics and like information stuff about the game. Really interesting. Like one of the first games to ever do that. So again, like I said, this game kind of does some things. It's kind of, you know, most of these games are just the way that they're controlled and played are very ahead of the time like. But anyways, um, moving on um, from that. We're almost at the very end. And there's two more. Oh, fuck! No, 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 no. I almost forgot about one of my favorite games on the Saturn, made by the legendary Hideo Kojima. Uh, most, this game might be mostly thought of as like a freaking uh, PS1 game. And hopefully if I time this right, I'll put the music in right here. That will hopefully make you think of this game. Police Nuts by Hideo Kojima. This, I think, is his second or third game after Snatchers. It's probably the second. Uh, it is a game about this character that accidentally got frozen in the year 2015 or so, and you know, it's the first astronauts ever to go to space as police officers, hence the name, and they're basically helping create this, like, space shuttle that people are going to live in called Beyond. Uh, it's very similar if you've ever seen the film WALL-E, same idea, basically that, but like, you know, they're not all fat and incapable, no. No, it's like a whole, like, like, like other Earth, and like, inside, inside, of, inside of, like, a spaceship, there's like a skybox, 
And there's like buildings, there's like cars and shit. It's crazy. All of a sudden, it's like space calling. It's fucking insane. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. It's a three disc game, and I love it to death. I'm on disc three. I've been playing through it. It's very Metal Gear Solid and Snatcher like. It really, really is. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Hideo Kojima. Uh, he, he does a great job, like, I mean, you know, making, like, video games as, like, films and whatnot. You know, yeah, these, his games are more so, like, like, you know, experiences than they are games. And Police Socks is no exception to that. It's a point-and-click adventure, but very, like, it's very, like, point-and-click adventure in terms of gameplay. But it's great. It's a great game. Those are the burned discs. I have the original discs in another box. If you want to see them, they're in here. This is the version I bought with those discs. Here they are. The original Japanese discs. What a cool fucking game this is. I, lo I love Please Nuts. It's great. Okay, now, there are two iconic games or series on the Saturn that I'm smiling thinking about that a lot of Saturn fans out there are strongly familiar with that I haven't gotten to yet. I'm saving, I always say the best for last when it comes to these videos. You know, where are these games? Where are these games? Where is, you know what? P, D, S, and. N I D. <laughs> I'm just giving their initials. Where are those games? We're gonna get. We're gonna get to them. We're gonna get. To, we're gonna get to them. Don't worry. First, I want to show you guys my Sega Saturn discs I have in here. There's some really, really good games I have uh, saved. Let's let's look into them. Oh, they're burned. All right. So yeah, I'm show you guys. I right, showed you guys my Sega CD discs. Uh, aha. Here we go. So first, we have a stall. Another copy of a stall I own. And Bug 2. Alright, which are, those are good games. Right well, here I have Soul Summer Mario. What did I think I showed last time? Burning Rangers. I really, 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 really want to own this game. Oh, yeah, Backup of Christmas Nights. Um, and Clockwork Night and Clockwork Night 2 as well. Burning Rangers is another Sonic Team made game. I mentioned it a little bit in my Sonic 2 review uh, from way back when. Uh, it's a game where you play as firefighters and you fight well, and you fight fire. That's the whole game. There's no enemies, there's no nothing. You just fight fire with like. These high-tech suits that spray water, and it's really cool. It controls kind of uniquely with like, with like the left and right triggers, and everything. Plays different characters. I really like it. I have to play more of it later. It's a great game, in my opinion. I just need more time with it. Deep Fear Discs One Two. Oh shit! Sorry. Deep Fear Discs One Two. D One and Two. Are these? These are backup discs I made for D One Two. But here's the original Deep Fear Japanese discs. Dragon Ball Z. Wait. Another backup disc of that game, that's right. Earthworm Gym 2, I keep forgetting I have that. I need to play that. There's original Fire Spring Mix. I have Gax. I burned a copy of Gax. Uh, Grandia! I do have Grandia, but I've not played it yet. I really want to, though, because I know it's cool. I want to get the second one for Dreamcast. There's Garden Heroes, amazing game I mentioned earlier. The House of the Dead, originally on the Saturn as well. The arcade version, really so homely as that is. Um, Magic Carpet, a game I really want to play when I get the chance to. I had this disc for years, I'm actually a Mega Man 8. Mr. Bones, played it recently, not too great in my opinion, it's, it's alright, it's not, not too great. Oh my god, this weird ass, cool ass game, Mystery Mansion, I have a lot of the scary games for Saturn, which are really cool. <sighs> Missed. <sighs> the game we're gonna fucking talk about, guys. Panzer Dragoon Saga. I found these gorgeous artworks, like, I think they're, they're fan made. Online a long time ago. Unfortunately, these discs don't work that great with the Saturn with Suicide Center, but the ones I do own do. The other ones I own. Uh, Rayman. Sega Ages. Uh, this, these are like Yu Suzuki's like, uh, collection of Yu Suzuki games. We have Outrun, we have Afterburner, and Space Harrier. Three of my favorite games ever that he's made, obviously. Sonic R. I don't know why the fuck I have another copy of that. Virtua on a great game that my friend showed me. And it's also in Yakuza Kwame, too, I believe. You can play in that game. So, which is great. And then, and, then we, and then we get to Dreamcast games, which we'll show this off later on in the future. Not, which I have a lot of fucking Dreamcast games that I actually have played. So that brings me to the finale of the video. We have two more... Ah! Two more gaming franchises on the Saturn. That were locked to the Saturn. <coughs> Excuse me, for many years. But now, thankfully, they're available to play on, on much amount of consoles. One of them I already talked about a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not some water, sorry. And we're going to get into it too later. Um, so those games should, ob should be obvious. The one, the only, the, the beloved, the iconic Nights into Dreams. There's the US version, and there's the Japanese version again. I fucking love 
this game. I finally beat it last year. I made a whole video about that. The most revolutionary 32 bit game yet. This game is a beautiful. It really is. This was the game that Yu Suzuki, oh, I mean Yuji Naka, I'm sorry, was really focusing on during the Sarah's era. This is the, the game he wanted to make for it. It's a fantastic, fantastic game. A beautiful game. Um, I'm glad he got to make it. He wanted to make this game, I think, I think, right after Sonic 2. I don't know. We don't know. Uh, there's actually 16-bit images of Knights in the Dream. So it's like, you know, ones that were going to make for that they were going to make for the Mega Drive. They're going to make Knights in the Dreams for the second Genesis, the Mega Drive. So it's very likely that Knights was going to be the game that came after Sonic One. And if, in case if you don't know about this information, again check out my Sonic Two review. Originally, Sonic Team did not want to make Sonic Two right away. They wanted to make their own other games. And then next up, I have the U.S. copy of. Christmas Nights, which was super expensive. I bought this like last Christmas time I did, I believe. I, I was lucky enough to actually, you know, I, I lucked out and was able to afford it. But it's not very easy to come by at all. And there's the official disc, just so you know I'm not bullshitting. This is not a burned copy. This is the this is this is the real shit. Right here, guys. Oh, it's kinda of scratched. Ah! Also you you get to play a Sonic in this game. You get to like unlock him. He's he's like a present that you can actually unlock. And once again, there's the Japanese version of the game. Nice is fantastic. If you know think of Sonic the Hedgehog flying in the air. You play nice, except though, unlike Sonic, you're not supposed to be beat the levels as fast as possible. You're kind of supposed to take your time until like the last minute and collect as many points uh, as well as you can along the way. Um, yeah, it's designed kind of uniquely in that sort of way. So next up, we have the grand big daddy of of of, of Saturday games that I really want to show off and talk about the the iconic, the beloved. Panzer Dragoon Trilogy on the Sega Saturn. Holy fucking shit. What an incredible trilogy of games this is. It's a lot deeper than just a rail shooter when you play as a character on top of a dragon. It's a lot deeper than like a dragon and like rider kind of character bond story. Well, that's definitely the heart of it, but it's, my god, especially Panzer Dragoon Saga. Panzer Dragoon Saga. In the in, in all the in all the worlds like you know of, of all the RP, best RPGs of all time lists in the world there are out there, Panzer Dragon Saga does not get talked about enough as it should. It, it's so depressing because it's it really deserves to be ranked as possibly the greatest RPG game ever made. I'm serious. Better than Final Fantasy VII? You betcha. Better than uh, what's it called? Kingdom Hearts? Or whatever? You betcha. Yes. Maybe even the baby better, better than my favorite game, Shenmue. I, I love Shenmue. Shenmue is my favorite game of all time. But I'm really having a big soft spot for Panzer Dragon Saga recently. It's, a, it's an amazing game. I'm on the beginning of disc three, and I and I had that moment where I realized this game might be my new favorite game at the tail end of disc two. And there's just a, something special about that that like that scenario when you're with Azel and everything. There's just something about it that made me go like. Okay, this might be my new favorite game of all time. And if you're wondering who Azel is, uh, she, that's the Japanese name of the game, Azel, Panzer Dragon RPG. She is a big, 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 big key element of, of the game's story. That's her right there, I believe, on the back. But, fuck, man. Wow. Like, these games are getting remade for modern consoles where people pick them and play them, and I'm glad. I'm so happy it's happening. We just had a remake of Panzer Dragon 1. Uh, if you're gonna go out and buy it, I recommend playing the game with the original soundtrack. No offense to the remastered soundtrack, I'm just not a fan. In fact, I was recently able to pick up this puppy right here. The uh, limited run version of Panzer Dragon. There's no disc inside though. It's just a case, which is kind of sad. Um, so yeah, no game, which sucks. And there's, that's the only mention we get for Sega right there. But this whole manual talks about like you know the PS4 and like modern gaming and stuff and how like you know the uh, and how Panzer Dragon was able to get released for it. It's it's really unique. But there's no game. It, it, there, there's no copy. Nothing. And in case if you're wondering, uh, I I actually swapped these discs around. I have the burned discs instead of the Japanese copies because those are the versions I want to play. You know because they're in English. And I believe I had the Japanese discs in these cases. Yep, there's a Japanese version right there, the official one. 
Oh, that's beautiful fucking artwork. And I'm going to, going to, going to, going to, going to, going to for sure review. Oh, damn it. Um, Panzer Dragon 2 Zwei. Hopefully, sometime really soon. I don't know about this year because I have so much of my life happening right now. Um, I have too much going on right now. I, uh, <laughs> with my kids, with my wife, and just life in general. Uh, and with work and with my book. I have a lot happening on the side right now. But I want to get around to reviewing this game as soon as possible. I really, 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 really do. Because it is a great game. It's more of like a, it's more of like a prequel title. But fucking... Oh, oh my god, I cannot stress enough how good this game is. You, If you've not played it yet, you're doing yourself an, unjust, an, an, an injustice. Play it. Play it, seriously. They're, oh, I forgot how cool that disc looked. Like, it looks like Halloween. Kind of, but look at that, though. That looks fucking cool with the silhouette of... I think his name is Laggy, or not Laggy. I think that's his name. And I forgot the writer's name uh, in the second game. But, yeah, wow. Like, what a cool fucking game that is. And then I think we have... Oh, no, these are not the... Oh, no, these are the... Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, burn disc. I think the originals might still be in here. Let me look. Yeah, they are. They're the originals. They all look, they all look the same as this one. There's disc two. All in kanji. All in Japanese. I cannot read it. I, I'm actually learning Japanese at the moment, so I'm going to hopefully be able to read it one day. Uh, disc three and four. That's my plan anyways. But yeah, man. Seriously, if you care enough to like check out the Saturn... Do it. Do it now. Right now. Uh, and don't rush out to play this game. You know, which supposed to play it. Because it is a very expensive video game. It is one of the most highest priced games of all time. But it is, it is the most expensive video game ever made that's actually worth your time to, to buy and play. Not that I recommend you doing it. No, it's going up in the it's, it's like a It's like a 10 thousand hundred thousand dollar game nowadays or something it's it's going up it's but it's, i'm not kidding i think it's the most expensive game ever made like because you know there's games like what's it called like uh tracking field or whatever it's called on the nes it's really expensive not worth your time with the, with the game like that but this game has a rich deep it's it's like the most expensive game next to earthbound that's actually worth your time to buy and play but i don't recommend you wasting your money on a, on a video game not even one is Okay, well, it's up to you if you want to spend that kind of money on Prince of Dragon Saga. It's up to you, but, um, I'm satisfied with what I got here. I really, really, really hope one day I can at least, uh, own, well, I'm hoping Limited Run, when the Prince of Dragon Saga remake comes out, makes a case like this for Prince of Dragon Saga with, like, four empty, like, you know, disc slots, so I can at least put my discs in there. Um, that would be enough for me. I'd be happy with that for the rest of my life, uh, honestly. But what I have right now is, is also kind of enough. It is pretty neat I, that I own the games like this. But yeah, guys, that's really it for my Sega Saturn episode. It is a beautiful, beautiful console. I highly recommend you guys going out there and ah, and picking one up if you had the time, the money, the interest. I say do it. If I, if I at all piqued your interest in this video to, 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 to play on the Saturn, do it. Do it now. Do it now. You must buy the Saturn and get it. I'm sorry about my shitty Arnold impression. But the point is, is that the Saturn, the Saturn is cool as fuck. Uh... But yeah, you know, obviously you don't have to get a fucking Saturn, no, because like, you know, it's not it's not gonna be for everyone. But you know, that's kind of depressing, cause but it's definitely there's a, there's a lot of games on the Sega Saturn, a lot of games on the Sega Saturn that I think everyone should be able to play at least once in 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 their life. Everyone and and, and the Dreamcast obviously a little bit too. At least Shenmue, at least Shenmue definitely falls in that category. Prince Dragon Saga here, oh hell yeah, it's definitely a game that I think everyone should be. Give a shit to try out. It's it's a really designed, um, it's a really well designed RPG, for sure, for sure, for sure it is. Um, but yeah, guys, that's basically the end of my Sega Saturn uh, review of the of the series. Um, please let me know in the comments below what you thought. Um, please let me know if, if anything is going interested you. If you want to buy a Saturn, or not let me know right away. That'd be great. Um, yeah, guys, uh, if you haven't played one before, do it. I say do it as soon as you can. It's worth your time. It's worth your money. Um, peace out, have a good one, take care, bye bye, and uh, play some Sega Center. Have a good one, guys, and until next time, I'll see you in 2022 on um, episode 9, I believe, on the PlayStation 1. That's going to be a really fun episode to me. I love the PS1, I do, I love it. It's not as, to me, target wise, it's not as like impressive as like a Sega Pace Attack, but I still love love the PS1 and 2 for like, you know, what, what they have done in terms of software library. Um, and, and the 3 and 4 and the 5. I love PlayStation Journal, but. I'm most likely going to talk about the PS1 when we get to it. Peace out. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye. I love my server very much. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.
All right, ladies and gents, let's get ready to play some Saturn. I don't know if you can see my head that well, probably not. Let me actually fix that really quick since I'm finally in the frame. Uh, I don't know if you can, so with that being said, it might be a little bit better. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, it's not much, Jesus, I played much, but quite a bit. So now I'm going to play some Sega Saturn. I have quite a lot of games to put out, but um, we're not going to look at all of them. First and foremost, most importantly, let's get the system turned on. I'm not sure on the television. I forgot to do that part. The TV just mysteriously turns on. Uh, okay, let's uh, get the console turned on. Ready? Here we go. Oh, of course, the BIOS menu screen. You can do a lot of really cool things in this menu. Um, yeah, let me just get the TV off a little more. And I'll go ahead and zoom the camera in. And I'll show you guys. Um, but before you do that, I think... No, I'll do that later, actually, because I don't want to mess with it. So I'm going to show you some really cool things with the Sega Saturn BIOS menu. This menu is really, 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 really cool. Uh, my favorite, favorite video game, like, BIOS menu ever, probably, besides the PS3's uh, X and B menu, and PS4's menu. But this is this is a, just really creative and cool. It doesn't do, it doesn't do as much as your you know, uh, everyday modern system can do, like, your Nintendo Switches and your Xbox Ones and your PS5s, PS4s, but this guy right here, wow, this is really neat. So we're going to go to here, let me just sit down, we're going to go to this button, this is uh, CD-ROM discs, I think this one's like memory expansion, yep, so system memory, there is like, this, the, that empty area down there screen would be like where like the memory card screen is if you put on like a Saturn memory card. But um that's just some settings. Well there's this one right here, look, look at this. Look at that. That's called the Sega Saturn uh, shuttle, I believe. Isn't that cool? Yeah. This is a brand spaceship, but it's zoom, there it goes. Just zooming on through. Uh, after we're done with these consoles, these like, uh, what, what, what should we call it, these like AV old school consoles, like with the old, old cables, I think I'm just going to capture like, you know, starting with the Xbox 360, I'm just going to capture like, you know, what the console can do and stuff um, after that. Uh, but yeah, yep, there it is. So that's, that's pretty neat. And then this is, this is network, I believe, yep. Is, that, is it the clock? I don't know. Bunch of random shit. There's games. Play the card games? I don't know that. What's this? Adjust around? That's pretty cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, it has a lot of really great audio options. Um, so many really neat, neat things that, that they can do. So. Yep, yeah, alright, that being said, let, let's get a game into the console. I think before I get a game in, I'm going to show you guys something really, really, really uh, neat and random. If I can spin the camera over to the console itself really, 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 really quick. Just get the tripod. Sorry, there we go. Alright, so, sorry the lighting seems a little funny now, but this, my friends, I'm going to show you in action what this can do. This is a Sega Saturn actually ready to play cartridge. Remember, this cannot play burn discs. I'm going to try to strictly not play burn discs. Uh, so Saturn does do that, but um, today we're going to focus on this cartridge right here. You guys ready? Here we go. First of all, we got to blow on it. Put it in the back of the system. In there, as you can tell, you can't tell right now. But let me pin it over. It's not affected yet. It doesn't freeze or anything when, when you do that. It's still running normally, but it doesn't. You know, you have to reset the console, turn it on and off. Obviously, either soft or hard reset it to let it know that that is in there. So I'm going ahead and go ahead and do that. Oh, by the way, the uh, U.S. Sega Saturn console actually has a different uh, startup sound effect than the, than the Japanese one does. Uh, just so you guys know. In case if anyone, yeah, it's a random fun fact for you guys. 
So yeah, that's, that's the Japanese one. The US one's a little different. And there it is. It's just the Sega logo comes up. Action play. There it is. Okay. So you can put cheats. Memory Manager, my favorite feature of the whole cartridge. Look at that. I have a lot of, I have a lot of save data that you can... This is the internal memory from, from the console system memory. This says it right there. This is the memory for the, uh, you know, for the extra input itself. The cartridge has way more free space down there. See that? Free space. Free space. Can you see that okay? Uh, you should be able to. Yep. And yeah, uh, a lot of these are copies, uh, or like, you know, how many pages are like, you know, sure, like, you know, just things I have. I'm not going to delete anything, so press me to go back. And we're going to put a game in. And I think the very first game I should do is something iconic. I don't know. You know what? I don't think I'm going to do all these games because I want to save time. <laughs> but we'll definitely start with this one. Uh, just because of the music alone. Not giving away what it is. You'll see. You guys ready for this? It's the A button. You can see my head. Hello. Yeah, you can. Whoa! Here you go. First game we're doing. Here we go. Uh, guys, ready? Here it is. What's that? Oh! Hell yeah! Daytona! Daytona! Let's go away, let's go away. Daytona! This song is amazing. Oh, it's out, yeah. 
guess so. Alright guys, that's it. Oh, Sega. Cool. Oh my god, I forgot to mention that in the video. You can you can reset the console by doing this. Let me show you. So the the Dreamcast has the exact same uh, reset option. So what you want to do is is that you hold down the face buttons all the way once you press start, and it resets the system. But it resets like menus, um, which is pretty cool. You can do it from from your couch, much like you know a console a console that that you can do today, which is really 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 cool in my opinion. Okay. Next up we have a very, 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 very important kind of game. I'm only doing two more games and then that's it. It's just, or maybe four more games, but, or maybe three. I got so four in total. But next up is another very important one um, that we're going to look at. Hope you guys can see what it was, because I want to give it away. Zoom, zoom into the TV still. Yes. Here we go. This one is very special on Saturn. I'm gonna lay down, ready? Right? Yeah! There we go. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Here you go. So I think this iconic, beautiful game on Saturn that anyone out there should instantly be recognizable with. Because it loads it. There we go. Is or she knights? That's right. Knights is uh, Andromedas. Knights is whatever gender. Knights is whatever you want knights to be because he's a figment of, of. He's basically your 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 like sh the shadow of your dreams, kind of, kind of, but like, but like in a good way. Okay, here we go. Knights. Oh my God, that that intro. Cinematic feels so Sonic-like to me. This whole game just does. It really, to me, it does. Like you can tell it's made by the same guys who made Sonic. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes, Knights in the Dreams. and, and uh, Elliot.
seconds left, but, but you, you don't want to run through our shit. Yeah, you're not going to run through Seriously, so if, if there's any console I wish I grew up with, it, w it would be the Sega Saturn. It would be. And not that I'm, I'm thankful for what I did grow up with, but this is like the console that's been missing from my childhood. It just really feels like it. Whenever I play the system, that's just how, this, this is how this to me. Next up, we're going to show off a different game. Maybe a Sonic team as well. We'll see. Christmas Nights. Nice and James Stroke version. It's not, it's not Christmas time yet. But I'll at least give you an idea. I think right now it's just it's just winter nights. I think so. Let's see. Present. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play the game, I'm just gonna show you like all of these unlockables you get. You get museums, you get like, you get to play as Reload, nice as rival character. Uh, you get to play Christmas Nights, you can kind of, kind of whenever you want to. I think it's just Winter Nights, though. Mm -hmm. Right now, let's see. You also get to lock Sonic and play as him. Oh, it is, Chris it is Christmas Nights! Alright! What are the Christmas presents? This is the same thing I think it is. No, it's a little different. No, it is the same thing, I just think Christmas Nights is gone now. Okay, that's all. This is what I mean by Christmas came early for you guys. There they are in their awesome Christmas uniforms, since I don't play as Elliot. This game also has its own story, it's like a semi-sequel to Nights and before uh, Nights Journey of Dreams on the Wii. Basically. I love this game so much. Next up we have the last Sonic Team game, I think, on the Saturn. Well, not the last one, the one I'm going to show off lastly for now. And it's still recording, right? Let me just check really quick. One that a lot of you out there, I hope, are, are familiar with. This is a very kind of important game on the system that I talked about a bit already. It's Sonic Jump. There's three Sonic and CGI. It looks pretty cool, in my opinion. Man, I would have loved it. Sonic Jump. I would have loved it if this, is, if this was my first Sonic game. Oh my god, I would have been so happy. I wish it was. I really honestly do. But first, I'm going to show off Sonic World to you guys. When you're in a 3D space, it's Sonic. You can just run around and have fun. Uh, basically. Yep, there's Sonic. This is it. This is, this is Sonic World. You just run around, and that, that, that's it. That's, that's the, whole, the whole shebang. Uh, you can also interact with Tails, he's around here somewhere. There he is. I can hear him flying. Oh, there he is, hey Tails.
go. There we go. Yay, pick, pick me up. Look. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to show you something else really neat, really quick. Hold on, guys. The compilations. Sonic 1, Sonic Knuckles, Sonic 3, Sonic 2, Sonic 2, Sonic 2, Sonic 2, Sonic 2. And then, and then uh, you can play it with Lockdown, which is pretty cool. But uh, I'm going to show off Sonic uh, Unique. Well, I'll show off Sonic Unique. first. This is 
my pets. Watching. Sorry, uh, sorry if you guys can't read it. I tried to get the English version to work earlier, but it wasn't working.
messages. Said, folks, here's this beautiful, beautiful tell screen. It is Enzer Dragoon. Hell yeah! Oh shit, what the? Sorry. One of the coolest fucking games ever made. Seriously, though. Why not? Just to save the video. I just saw that. Episode 1. There's 6 in total, I believe, or 7. But yeah, this game is, is amazing. It's gorgeous. It's really I mean, look at this. My fucking god. I think the horror videos of this game already. Go check it out if you haven't yet. Seriously. Yeah, this game is amazing. Seriously. Yeah, oh, the fitting control pack does work. What the hell? The music. Oh, yeah, yeah, it looks like that. Yeah, it sucks. Hey guys, that's my uh, review of the Sega Saturn. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, sorry that it, this section was super long. I'm very tired doing it. It's like 1 a.m. right now. Holy shit. But yeah, thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate if you stuck to the end. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know. Uh, I'm really excited to do the PlayStation 1 video. I'll do that one as soon as I can in 2022. This might be the last, or one of the last videos I make for the year. Besides my other video, which is about Shenmue and Yakuza. And that might be it for me. I'm sorry. I don't know what else I'm going to do this year. Um, I've been I've just been very tired of life recently, so I really need a mental break out of a lot of different things. But yeah, thanks for watching. I really do. I really, really, really do appreciate it. So thank you so much. Have a good day. Take care. And uh, peace out. I'll see you guys next video. Goodbye. Thanks again.